Coming in 2021, a gritty neo-noir crime graphic novel written by Marcus E. Ako. Also coming in 2021, an upper middle grade contemporary fantasy with a huge emphasis on adventure written by Marcus E. Ako. Is there gonna be a problem with switching genres? Hi, my name is Marcus and I'm the idiot on the writer's block. If you're new to the channel, I, the idiot, ask experts for tips on how to write, publish and promote my first fiction novel. In the past, I've asked questions such as how to write a great protagonist, is writer's block real or a myth, which do writers prefer, simple or purple prose, and many other questions, which you can see in this playlist right here. But watch this video first and then rewind back to this point, click on this link and check out all the other videos that I have on the channel. Once you've watched them, please like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel for more expert tips on how to write, publish and promote your first fiction novel. If you've been following my journey to write, publish and promote my middle grade fantasy fiction, Atticus the Mighty, you'll remember me mentioning in this video right here how I was lucky to team up with Sublime Studio on another one of my projects, the gritty neo-noir crime graphic novel, Color City Chronicles. We'll talk about that project on another video, but for today, I wanna to talk about authors switching up genres. On the one hand, I have Atticus the Mighty pitched at an upper middle grade audience level. And on the other hand, I have Call of the City Chronicles, which is a graphic novel series that is chock full of violence, sex, drug use, and foul language. Holy hand grenade, the language is so blue, it's like Red Fox and Joan Rivers had a baby Eddie Murphy, and they left the baby to be raised by Andrew Dice Clay and Kevin Smith. I'm talking clerks Kevin Smith. Real blue language. So it's safe to say that the key audiences won't really overlap. But is that really a problem? I mean, Neil Gaiman wrote American Gods and Coraline. And before you start yelling, I know I am not Neil Gaiman. I am nowhere near Neil Gaiman. I am not even fit to polish the man's shoes. I get it. Trust me, I get it. But I would like to know, is he one of those exceptions that prove the rule? Or is it okay for a novice like me to play across multiple genres? So that's the question on the writer's block this week. What is wrong with an author writing in different genres? And here are some experts to give me advice on authors working in different genres. I mean, I think my, my output makes that pretty clear like in terms of what, you know, what, what I've been doing. And actually, you know, when I got that Arts Council grant, I got the grant to, to write A River Called Time, but, but also I was supposed to write a graphic novel. So I had a proposal, I put together a proposal for a vampire graphic novel set in Victoria, Bristol, you know, and I'd done River and that at the same time. And I got my artist, I lost my artist in the same way that you're talking about. Like, so like, so uh, I've got nine pages of this proposal and a whole outline for this novel called Messiah and a uh, graphic novel called Messiah. And uh, yeah, that, that's it. So, so for me, it depends on what kind of writer you are. I don't feel, I'm interested in so many things. But I don't feel that I should stick to one particular thing. I know it annoys other writers. I know other writers are like, how dare you come from realism and that's your thing and you've moved over to science fiction. Whatever. But it doesn't mean that I wasn't into science fiction when I was writing realism. I was just as into it then as I am now. It's not like I suddenly decided because it's in vogue or anything. And in fact, my mum said to me uh, that, that she thought I'd write science fiction first. And she was shocked when I wrote The Scholar because of, you know, like, I'm so big into it. So I think for me, I can't be the kind of writer who just sticks to one genre. That is so boring. And I'm really excited about so many things that, that you know, I always say, don't judge me by the last book you read of me, because you probably will be very surprised by what the next book is going to be. I'm just more interested in stories. You know, stories can come from various places. I would do historical fiction. I would do all sorts of stuff. I'd do romance if I had a good romance idea. I've done a bit of surrealism. I don't really care, you know? It's just like, okay, so this is a good story. I really want to tell that. Can I tell it to the best of my ability? The short answer is, is no, I don't think that it's a problem. Uh, the longer answer is you do need to be aware of your career and like you said, your brand. It's a strategy question more than anything. 
Um, so for instance, if you write sweet middle grade in picture books, and then you want to write, you know, graphic novels, noir for a different adult audience, perhaps, um, or, you know, you're crossing over into erotica or something, you might want to use uh, a pen name for your older work or your younger work, one or the other, but you could do both. I, I personally believe that the more creative endeavor somebody uh, in, just embarks upon, it just feeds the creative mind. Um, so I think that's a good thing, but you also want to be stra strategic in that if you sell a middle grade series, you need to have the time to put out, you know, a book a year or whatever to 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 focus on on that. So if you're breaking up that, you know, that pattern to create other work that won't necessarily feed that audience, I think you would want to be careful. A lot of it is is timing. But if you look at authors like, oh, Kate Messner, she put out 12 books last year from nonfiction to middle grade to young middle grade to picture book to picture book nonfiction. And she'll say her brand is curiosity. And so she will just follow whatever rabbit hole. She's actually got a great podcast. I've heard her speak on this quite a lot. But if you really want to have a name as um, YA rom-com, and that's that's really where you want to focus, um, yeah, that's, I, that's good too. But if you break out of that, if you've got a lot of young followers, readers and followers, and then you suddenly end up writing you know, some pretty graphic adult books. I wouldn't say don't do it, just be aware that you might want to use a pen name or, you know, just think about your audience. I actually find it very attractive in a client when they have lots of different um, projects that I can that I can take on. However, you can't do them all at once, I guess. Um, so do one thing, do it well, and then you can, can move on. Go on, Chris, so you can start this one off. Um, for me, I think... Obviously, when you start out as an author, you get a bit of a fan base behind you. And I've seen this as well with other authors that I've read and enjoyed. You kind of get tailored and known for doing one particular genre. So when you switch, you can, your, your audience is already pre-existing and it, they can be a bit skeptical, I think. Um, like Steve Kavanagh, for example, we had him on the show. He very much writes crime fiction. So if he brought out a romance novel, some people might be put off by that because he's known for his crime and he's 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 good at that. Um, so I think that that would probably be the only thing I'd be concerned about is the readership that you've already worked hard to build. You could lose, or um, they might not enjoy it as much as you think they would. I think some people do it because they like. For example, I love reading romance novels. Um, I'll admit that, it's fine. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know if I could actually write one. Um, so like novels like One Day and um, stuff like that that come to mind, I think they're brilliant novels. And they, when I've read them, I've enjoyed them. But I don't think I could ever try my hand at one despite the fact that I enjoy them. Mm. Yeah, I think for me, very similar um, response in terms of confusing your read readers, but also I'm someone who is kind of new in the game is writing as a lot of us are indie authors that listen and watch this show that you're still trying to find your feet so often I do have tendencies to want to write different genres and more horror based but sometimes I want to go off in the crime thriller just to sort of pay homage to sort of these little urges in my body that tell me to write this write this so I am I've gone through this concept and thought process of how do I write in different genres if I'm going to how do I deal with that uh, and for me, that was the biggest hurdle I came up with, what Chris just mentioned. Um, but there's also a lot of people that have done this. And we've had plenty of people on the show that have done this. And it seems the answer for that could often be having a pen name or a pseudonym, pseudonym, um, because there are people that have come on the show who have been um, nutrition writers and then gone into sort of uh, romance or, or fiction horror. Uh, you know, there's definitely crossovers in there. so. I think it's perfectly fine to do if you're ready to accept the fact it may confuse your readers if you stick with the same name or if it doesn't you know why not go off and, and look for a different name and i think that's kind of a cool thing because once you become a pen name you know you can be anyone you want and that is a really cool thing and a very powerful tool 
So perhaps, you know, look at it and, and maybe worth doing. And there you have it. Experts have given me advice on what to do if I want to play around in different genres. Check the description below for links to their work. But what did you think about what they said? Leave your opinions in the comments to this video. And don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to the channel for more expert tips on how to write, publish and promote your first fiction novel. I'm Marcus and I'll see you next time. When I was thinking about blue comedians to mention, my mind was racing. I would, I mean, I, start, I came up with like Lisa Lampanelli, uh, Richard Pryor, George Carlin. Um, oh, what's the guy? Uh, the one who always got in trouble back in the day where, and he's, oh, eh, ah, it's going to bug me. It's really going to bug me. The one he's, he's, they, they, they portray him in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. The name's not, the, the name isn't, oh, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to be screaming. Why didn't I remember the name? Um, you know what? I would Google it and I'd put it in, in, in while I'm editing it, but I will, I'm not going to do that. I won't do that. If you remember who I'm talking about, he, there was a movie play and he, it was played by Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman played the character. I can't remember the name right now. I'm not going to Google it. I would like you to tell me who it is. So if you remember who I'm talking about, he's a comedian. He was played by Dustin Hoffman in a movie about himself. He, the character also appears in The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Put it in the comments. And yeah, I'm going to kick myself. Oh, I can't remember who it is. But anyway, I love those guys and girls and ladies. Come on, Sarah Silverman. Ah. Oh, no, see, I like some of her jokes. I don't know. <laughs> Joe Brand. Yay. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Hit me in the comments.